worked for George Lucas for 10 years making Star Wars games. Now I am doing my, my thing for education and I've been doing it for about five years. Thank you. Immunitech is um, the second educational project that we've done. Um, by the way, I, I know I have 15 minutes, but I'm on an iPhone 3GS, so I may not have enough battery to actually go the whole 15. We'll see how we do. I have location services on. Okay, um, anyway, Immunitech was a project that we did um, where we, um, we wanted to create a video game that taught. And this was our chief challenge was trying to create a video game that did that. Let me see if I can advance over here because it's already giving me problems. There. Okay, so um, we created a video. Um, hang on for a second. Let me just fix my thing here because it's giving me trouble. Nope, not advancing. I'll do it up here. Okay, so our challenge was to create a video game that taught. We basically wanted to um, teach AP um, biology and um, high school students um, through a video game. And that's where Immunitech had its genesis. The trick was to create the video game that, te that taught immunology, because immunology has a whole bunch of terms that are very hard to understand. Um, macrophage, selectin, um, LPS, ICAM, these are all the little terms that go around related to immunology, and it's something that's very hard for students to grasp through a textbook. So what happened was the NSF funded um, the first phase, actually several phases of Immunitech, um, before I was involved. And a game was created by the original team, uh, which looked something like this. Um, this was one of the first screens in it. Um, they went out and did something that had two levels. Um, it was very well laid out in that um, you had a specific amount of tasks that you needed to do. The students were told what the tasks were uh, when they were going into the game. Um, there was a lot of text that explained things very well. There was a interface, a GUI, or graphical user interface, which basically um, was very clear, but also very uh, sort of grayish um, to represent the inside of the body. They had uh, red blood cells and lymphocytes and all sorts of other things going on. And then the interface had these four chambers where you could catch cells. When you caught a cell, you basically got all this information about the cell. And then, um, and it was all this text on screen. Every voice line was done with text. And so basically you had that up at the top. And so while somebody was talking, um, you also had the text on screen. And it was a professor character who spoke with this really annoying German accent. And he would chide you the whole game. Basically, you're not going fast enough. Things like that. Come on, faster, faster. And so the students went through the game. Here's another, here's another addition to the game, which was called My LA, My Learning Assistant. Um, this was an encyclopedia built into the game that, um, that the designers wanted the students to actually use. And they would get um, text, video, and audio related to different topics in the game. So what was the student reaction? They didn't like it. They didn't like the game at all. Basically, the problem was it was an interactive textbook. The reactions were, it's drab. It's boring. Not enough to do. Although they were given all the things they had to do, like you had to transmigrate a monocyte, they had no idea how to do that. Um, and they weren't given step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to that point. Um, there were other things that went on in the game. It had poor production uh, quality. It, it wouldn't compete well with a commercial game. Um, and when I say that, the graphics weren't cutting edge and the sound wasn't cutting edge. Even the professor voice was not very clear. It was hard to understand sometimes. The game was very buggy. So then they called me to fix it. <sighs> and so what did we do? As soon as I was brought on, I looked at all of the feedback. And then I did a do-over. Basically, I took the game and redesigned it and tried to respond to all of the user feedback that had come in. Not only was the game graphically challenged, but because there were bugs and because there were other things that confused the students, they actually didn't learn anything from it. So it wasn't achieving its primary goal of teaching. So that was another big onus uh, on our part, was to get learning content in it and also to improve the game. So one of the first things we did was work on the graphics and the sound. We added music, professional music. We added professional graphics. Uh, we redesigned the star of the, of the game, which you never actually saw. That little nanobot is a drone that flies through the body. So we gave the players something to identify with. We developed a story. Um, that would suck the students in. 
Um, this is the later interface. I'm going to show you a couple versions of the interfaces that we did. This is the latest version right now. Um, and we basically, when we, re when we designed this, our goal was to look at a commercial project or product and try and do the same thing or try and do something very similar so that if the students saw it, they'd be fooled into thinking it was a commercial product. Um, the other thing we did, the original game used Ogre, which was a open source uh, game engine, a lot of bugs, um, very unstable, and very hard to work with. We went to a company called Vicious Cycle and licensed a commercial game engine that had been used to ship several multi-million dollar selling games. And they gave us an excellent deal because it was an educational product. So first we did the front end, or this first interface that you see. Probably the most important screens you see here are the front end because that's the first thing the student sees or the end user sees. This is our lab menu. Basically, it's sneaky. What we did was we set it up like a game like SOCOM where you actually have to outfit your soldier. But instead of a soldier, it's the nanobot. And everything that you outfit has a little info tag on it that teaches you something about the body. For instance, over here, the storage one mimic for an ICAM is basically teaching you about the receptor called ICAM. It's a protein. Um, and if you don't know what an ICAM is, you just click on it and it would tell you more about it. So instead of making that knowledge something that was sort of passive on the part of the students or the end user, we'd make it something active so they'd actually have to go in and learn things about the game and about biology. Um, the, the database itself, MyLA, morphed into this panacea database. This was also really not used. Um, the students just don't want to go into an encyclopedia within a game. However, we redesigned it again and based it more on a model that we saw in Command and Conquer, Red Alert 3, and World of Warcraft, where basically the information is important to the game. So although it is also learning content, it's also information that is very important to playing the game. Hints, uh, points, all sorts of data points that we put into the game so the students would be attracted um, and, and now it's starting to get some hits. We actually have a counter built into the game to see if they'll be able to actually click on it and use it. Uh, this is what the game started to look like. This was the first iteration of it after we redesigned. We added a lot of color to the interface. We wanted, again, to draw the students in, so we wanted more flashy graphics. We enhanced the detail on the bloodstream and, on the, and we added the nanobot. And then we also added a lot of objectives. Just like you would find in any other game, a uh, first-person shooter or uh, something of that, of that type, so that the students would know exactly what they needed to do. We also gave them some things to do, like scanning, uh, scanning the cells. Oh, good, I don't see a yellow thing yet. Uh, and we've also enhanced that. We've added a human host to the interface so that there's more rooting interest now. If a player actually flies that nanobot into the side of the bloodstream, well, they'll kill the human host eventually. If they start shooting the cells instead of the bad guys, the pseudomonas, they'll kill the host. Um, and they also have weapons to choose from, but they're not like the standard kind of weapons that you'd find in a, in a game. They're actually related uh, to what they do in the bloodstream. You have disruptor missiles that disrupt proteins and disrupt invaders like viruses. Um, and all of the different weapons basically are all geared towards learning much more than shooting. But we disguise them as shooting. Students, players love to shoot. Okay, and we also put some videos in the game. We have no audio. Can you guys hear it? Good, okay. It's my microphone. Popping. Oh, you're hearing it near, okay, got it. Here we go. This is high tech. So we've got these kind of videos in the game. We've got other cooler videos to illustrate things like scale. Can you guys hear it now? Good. I'll just stay slumped over like this. This is good. Uh, would this work, guys? You think? I'm going to try. How's that? Okay, and we also added a whole bunch of blood cells. We wanted to, this is more learning content, and actually the way the bloodstream would really look, it would be filled with blood cells. So we're working towards making this game have as much learning content, as much passive and active learning content as possible. 
Um, and this is where the game's going. We're taking it more into a commercial direction where it, it looks even more like a commercial flight sim like Hawks or one of the other commercial games that are available for Xbox 360. And we're just making it as slick as possible with lighting and graphics. Uh, again, to draw the students in because we find that if they find the game doesn't look cutting edge enough, they don't want to play it and they don't key into the learning part of it. It's really uh, definitely very important to the equation. So uh, I think I have a trailer for it. So this will show you sort of some of the games. You can see some of the things we did. Can you hear it? How about now? Great. This is about a year and a half old. Okay, well that's perfect, I timed it perfectly. So, um, so that's the trailer. I asked initially, can a video game teach? I'm gonna let the students answer that question. These are, these are our actual testers. visual point of it so having actual interactive game to help understand the processes more was actually better to me because it gives me the sense of understanding and the visual interactive point of actually learning it. I'd rather play a game than listen to my teacher lecture. You had to think about what you had to do because you had to think about how you had to move, you had to think about where you had to shoot, how close you had to be in order to shoot. I would rather just listen to a teacher because you learn at the same time and have fun. Yeah, if you were to ask me right now what we're doing in class, I wouldn't even tell you right now. The game was more infor informative on what blood cells was and the vessels and stuff that I didn't know about. I think I learned more from the game in 20 minutes than I did from my biology class in one year. Well, once you entered the infection, you started marking selecting, so that way the microphage would start bonding to them and would go towards the infection. Who said macrophage? Thank you. 